Every time a new Mac gets released, Mac gamers hold their breath. Is this the year Apple finally takes gaming seriously? For years, the story has been the same. Apple announces a flashy game port, usually something that was already a hit years earlier, like No Man's Sky, Death Stranding, Cyberpunk 2077. The keynote crowd claps, the games come out a few months later, but then nothing really changes. The truth? Mac gaming is the biggest wasted opportunity in tech. Let's just have a look at the facts. Number one, Apple already has over 100 to 120 million active Macs out there. Number two, the M series chips have GPUs that absolutely can run AAA games, even on the lowliest M1 chip. Number three, they have a massive head start as the world's biggest gaming company by revenue, all thanks to their 30% cut of every single app and game released on the iPhone and iPad. And number four, a fan base who genuinely love Apple hardware and would definitely game on the Apple ecosystem if the hardware and software supported it. And yet, despite all of these advantages, hardly anyone buys a Mac to play games. PC and console gamers still laugh when Mac gaming gets mentioned. So today I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to propose my plan for how Apple could fix Mac gaming and what I would do if I was in charge. And along the way, I'll share some insider feedback, including why some of these steps are realistic and why some will never actually happen. And today's video is sponsored by the Ugreen Magflow Magnetic Power Bank. This device now supports the latest Qi 2 25 watt standard, allowing for fast wireless magnetic charging for the new iPhone 17 series. And it can also power an iPhone 16 Pro Max from zero to 50% in around 30 minutes. This new magnet array is seriously strong and helps keep your device firmly attached to the power bank even during use. And what's great about this is that you don't have to carry around an extra cable to charge the power bank. The built-in hand strap is also a USB-C cable which you can use to charge this device. Just go ahead and plug it into any adapter into the wall and get speeds of 30 watts power delivery input and output. Or you can charge with any USB-C cable and the LED screen on the side shows the remaining battery percentage clearly in real time. This braided USB-C cable strap is also great for handling on the go and doesn't get in the way at all when you're out and about and you need to slip it in your pocket or bag. The 10,000 milliamp hour capacity meets airline safety standards and it can be taken on board. And not only can it wirelessly charge supported AirPods, we can actually charge three devices all at the same time. Anyway, big thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Make sure to click the link at the top of the description to check out the product and support this channel. Now let's get back to the main content. The first step is simple. Apple needs to stop pretending that it can compete with Steam. History lesson, every company that's tried to build a Steam competitor store has failed. EA tried to launch Origin, Ubisoft built Uplay, Blizzard launched Battle.net Launcher, and even Microsoft when the Windows Store gave up and put Halo and Flight Simulator back on Steam. Steam has already won. It's where PC gamers live. Apple needs to embrace Steam in order to get Mac gaming off the ground. But here's the catch. Apple and Valve have a rocky relationship. Years ago, Apple Titan's App Store rules, Valve tried to launch their Steam Link and Apple blocked it. Bridges were burned. Apple also dropped 32-bit support for Mac games and it was a disaster. Suddenly, Valve titles like Half-Life 2 and Team Fortress 2 stopped working on Mac and Valve were in no mood to update their games for an ever-changing platform that doesn't respect backwards compatibility. Insider feedback that I've heard, Apple executives hate the idea of partnering with Valve. But the reality is this, if you want gamers to take Mac gaming seriously, you need to meet gamers where they already are. So what should Apple do? Offer cross-purchase parity. If you buy a game on Steam, it shows up in the Mac App Store library and vice versa. Right now, Mac gamers are punished. If you buy Resident Evil 4 Remake on Steam for Windows PC and you want to play it on your Mac, you'll have to repurchase it on the Mac App Store. What Apple needs to do is to stop chasing App Store exclusives and just embrace Steam as the standard. And yes, we all know that Apple are looking for their 30% cut of revenue for all games sold through the Mac App Store. But I actually believe Apple would make more money by embracing Steam and growing the Mac gaming audience rather than trying to work against Steam. It didn't work for EA, Ubisoft, Blizzard or Microsoft and it definitely can't work for Apple. So those companies all came crawling back and Apple should too. And then there's Apple Arcade. Right now it's basically premium mobile games, no ads, which is fine. But Apple could turn Apple Arcade into their Trojan horse for Mac gaming. Imagine if your Apple Arcade subscription also included every single Apple funded AAA port, all of the modern Resident Evil games, Death Stranding, Assassin's Creed Shadows, No Man's Sky, Hitman Wall of Assassination, and all future Apple featured games. This would deliver a curated catalogue of console quality games built for the Mac. 
This would instantly add value and create a reason for Mac users to actually try gaming on their machines. And don't forget, many huge iOS games, Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile, already run on Apple Silicon because the architecture between the M series chips and the iPhone and iPad is exactly the same. So why aren't they on Mac? Because Apple hasn't required it. If Apple simply said, any iPhone app over a certain revenue threshold must also ship on macOS, overnight, the Mac would gain millions of new games. Would Mac gamers play Clash of Clans on their desktop? Probably not, but games like Genshin Impact and Call of Duty Mobile, absolutely. Okay, so let's say that Apple opens the door. That doesn't solve the bigger issue, the developer tech stack. If you're a studio making a game today, here's how it usually works. You build a game on Windows, test on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, even Steam Deck. Cross compilation tools make this relatively painless, but if you want to support Mac or iOS, suddenly you need to maintain a separate Xcode project, different build tools and workflows that don't fit your pipeline. This is a huge reason why most studios skip the Mac. What Apple could do, number one, Cross-compilation support. Let devs build Mac and iOS versions directly from Visual Studio. No need for a separate Xcode project. This alone would make adding Mac support a checkbox and not a six month headache. And number three, don't ignore Vulkan. I know, insiders tell me that Apple hates Vulkan and Kronos. They see third party APIs as threats, but even officially supporting Molten VK, the Vulkan to Metal Translation layer, would send a strong signal to developers. We want you here. And it would make it so much easier to port many Windows and console games onto the Mac. Now let's talk about those Apple ports. Yes, Apple has helped along a few high profile titles, Resident Evil Village, Death Stranding, Assassin's Creed Shadows, Cyberpunk 2077. But here is the problem. These are all single player, one and done games. And they often release on Mac years after the hype has passed. What Apple really needs are games that people keep coming back to time and time again. For example, live service games like Monster Hunter Wilds or Street Fighter VI, which use the same RE engine as the Resident Evil games. Or competitive titles like Call of Duty, Counter-Strike 2, Valorant, Overwatch or Fortnite. And yes, in order to convince these publishers to put their games onto the Mac, this is going to require a lot of money. But think about this, Apple spent $4.5 billion a year on Apple TV Plus content and it loses over $1 billion per year on streaming. Imagine if even a fraction of that went into gaming. And here's the thing, you can't just throw money at a publisher and expect results. It requires constant investment. If a game makes 2 billion a year on PC and console, what would it take for them to bring it to Mac, a platform with maybe only one or two million potential buyers? The math doesn't really math unless Apple invests long term like Microsoft did with Xbox. This means creating dedicated porting studios, funding joint ventures with developers, not just one-off showcase deals, and learning how games differ from productivity apps, updating drivers, graphics APIs, networking, outside of the slow OS release cycle. That's how Microsoft grew DirectX into the standard. Apple needs the same commitment. And now let's talk about my most radical idea and maybe the most effective move that Apple could make. Apple could easily buy Codeweavers, the team behind Crossover, the app which allows many Windows games to run on a Mac through translation layers. And they could build a first party Windows compatibility layer for Mac and finally make Proton for Mac a reality. If you've ever used a Steam Deck before, you already know how powerful this approach is. Valve didn't want to be hemmed in by the walled garden of the Windows Microsoft Store, so they created their own hardware and adapted their own operating system. And Valve didn't wait for publishers to port their games over to their Linux operating system, SteamOS. They built Proton, a compatibility layer that translates DirectX calls into Vulkan on the fly. Suddenly, tens of thousands of Windows games just work on Steam Deck without developers lifting a finger. And the thing is that Apple already have their own proof of concept of how this could work and it's called the Game Porting Toolkit. Using the software from Codeweavers called Crossover and playing those Windows titles using Apple's D3D Metal translation layer, you can already run many Windows games on the Mac. But right now it's just a developer demo, not a real consumer product. It's clunky, it requires third party tools, it's not properly integrated with Steam or the App Store. So imagine this instead, Apple acquires Codeweavers who've been building this kind of tech for decades and they have tons of experience with working on pro on for the Steam Deck, they fold crossover and game porting toolkit into one polished user-friendly layer. Think of it like Rosetta 2, but used for all Windows games. And then once that's done, you just install a Windows game from Steam, click play, and it just runs on your Mac. No hacks, no config files. This could be Apple's Steam Deck moment. If Apple really wanted to fix Mac gaming overnight, this could be the way. Number one, buy code weavers. Number two, integrate crossover and game porting toolkit into macOS as a system level game mode. Number three, 
Market the hell out of it as play your entire Windows Steam library on Mac. That one move would instantly change the perception of Mac gaming. Instead of waiting for ports, you'd get day one access to 90% of the PC gaming library, just like the Steam Deck. Would it be perfect? No. Some anti-cheat games wouldn't work, performance wouldn't always be ideal, but the headline would be massive. Mac now runs Windows games. For the average gamer, that's all they need to hear. Now, Apple may never actually do this. Insiders say they'll always prefer native ports they can show off on stage. But the Steam Deck has proven that compatibility layers can grow a gaming platform from zero to millions of users in just a few years. And for Apple, that's a playbook just sitting there waiting to be copied. But here's the real roadblock though, Apple's culture. Executives at Apple don't see games as culture, they see them as apps. Think about it, Apple Music, Apple TV+, Apple News+, these are all cultural products worth billions in investment. Gaming, they're happy to take a 30% cut from mobile transactions and call it a day. I've heard directly from people who pitched gaming strategies to Apple execs, they just didn't get it. They're older, they don't play games, they grew up with music and movies as the dominant media. So when Apple spends $4 billion on TV, it makes sense to them. Spending even 500 million on Mac gaming, they see that as a niche. That's why despite Apple being the biggest gaming platform in the world by revenue, thanks to iPhone, they've never made a serious push for the other half of the market. Until that Apple mindset changes, all of this is just theory. So realistically, what is the most achievable path forward for Apple? So to summarize this video, number one, Apple needs to open up the App Store rules so Steam release games can ship to the Mac App Store without sandbox headaches. Number two, invest in cross compilation tools to make Mac builds as easy as Xbox or PlayStation. Number three, stop relying on one-off prestige ports. Build live service and multiplayer ecosystems, buy and create exclusive titles for the Mac. Number four, Bundle AAA ports into Apple Arcade and build a gaming catalog and player trust. Number five, open source D3D Metal and game porting toolkit so that Proton can work on macOS again. Build a proper first party compatibility just like the Steam Deck. And six, most importantly, treat games as culture and not just apps. So that's it, these changes alone would massively shift the perception of Mac gaming. Because Mac gaming already has everything that it needs. The Apple Silicon M series hardware is fantastic, we have millions of Mac users, and they have a lot of goodwill towards Apple. But what Apple lacks is its own commitment to the AAA gaming market. But if Apple ever decide to take Mac gaming seriously, the Mac could easily go from being a joke in the gaming world to being one of its most exciting platforms. So what do you think? What's the single biggest thing that Apple should do in order to fix Mac gaming? Let me know in the comments, I'll be reading. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.